All right, so we are here for our soul alignment session for our full moon coming up October 17th. It's a full moon in Aries. So this energy of Aries coming through as just a reminder for those of you that don't follow along with astrology or are new to astrology, when we're looking at full moon, it's always in the opposing sign to the sun sign that we're currently in. So we're in the sign of Libra, which makes our full moon in the sign of Aries, which is the opposite sign of Libra. So if we think about that Aries energy, Aries energy is very impulsive. So they are known to just be quick with the things that they are doing. They don't really think about the consequences um, we, we try to encourage Aries to think more about the consequences, right? So there's always shadow and light aspects to every Zodiac sign. So for Aries, it is that impulsive nature where they just kind of throw the consequences to the wayside and they're just like, I don't care. I'm doing it right. Um, so this is where they learn from their, their opposite sign of Libra, they learn how to bring in more of the temperance. They, they learn to think about what the consequences might be and weigh the pros and cons so that they can make a better decision. And then it shifts that kind of negative connota connotation of impulsiveness to more of an energy of spontaneity, right? Spontaneity can be really great. We love that spontaneous energy. We want to have some of that in our lives too. So it is this beautiful, like just recognition of maybe even playing with the words that you associate with it, of how it can shift. If, you've, if you're using a word like impulsive and impulsive to you carries like this negative kind of connotation, how can you shift to make it feel more spontaneous? And sometimes just that recognition can help shift the way that you begin to look at something so that you begin to make these minute changes that you otherwise wouldn't have realized that you needed to make. So I love, I love playing with the words that we use, right? Language is such a powerful tool. And when we can play with the words that we're using to help us kind of break into a new thought pattern or way of thinking about something that really expands how we can start shifting and moving through the world. So if Aries is about this impulsive energy and they're very fiery, right? My little fireballs out there. Um, <laughs> They're quick to anger, and this that's an important part that's going to come back later. Um, and they also, you know, they're they're kind of the warriors. Most areas that I know, they have a love of fighting. Like they are the fighters. They are the warriors. And so with that energy, they can be a fighter for anything, right? Most of the areas that I know, they are the fighters that are like more of the activists. They're standing up for the people with the the smaller voice for people that need to be heard for people that need help with someone else standing up for them because they're not able to do it for themselves and Aries when they take on that role and that is such a great service for Aries because they don't mind standing up and taking a stand in that way of being that mouthpiece of fighting for injustice and this is where they start to lean into that opposing counterpart of Libra where they're trying to create a world that's more just and more fair. So that is an aspect of Aries when they're tuned into that way, where it stops just being about the self-serving eye, which Aries is known for and starts being about the community, the, the world around you and not just you and how you can be of service to that is when you begin to shift into that frequency of how you can step into leadership in a way that helps you to be a voice and fight for what is needed for the whole and not just the eye. So with this energy of the full moon, what we might be seeing is how we can learn to bring more of that temperance into our lives, how we can see where we can maybe show up a little bit differently that's better for the whole and not just the self. Also, um, I told you we're going to, the anger is going to come back. So we have this square going on right now. And you know what? Let me share my screen real quick so you guys can see. No, that's funny. I didn't pull it up separately. Uh, ah, ah, I can't see you because the bar's in the way. Let me see. Can we, okay. There we go. Now you can see. Move that back out of the way. I'll put you down there. All right. So if you follow this red <laughs> square, this is the one that we're going to be paying attention to right now. This red square starts with the moon 
comes over to the Mars in Cancer, comes over to the Sun in Libra, comes over to Pluto in Capricorn. So this square energy is going to be bringing up the anger stuff, right? So we've got this really fiery Aries energy with the moon energy. Now we've got Mars in that watery energy of Cancer. So it's a, it's a very backwards feeling, right? <laughs> we expect fiery energy with Aries, not watery moon energy with Aries. So there's already a little quite feel right. And now we've got this watery energy with Mars, which is normally a fiery energy. So that's going to be another kind of takes you off kilter. And that Pluto energy in Capricorn, it's at the ending degrees of Capricorn. So this Pluto energy, Pluto being the planet of transformation, of death, rebirth, cycles, right, <laughs> is in this square relationship with all of this energy going on with Aries, with Mars, with the sun, right? So if we're adding all that together, we're looking at the cycles of anger. We're looking at how we have the opportunity to shift the cycles of anger, how we can use anger as a as a more positive means, as a tool to recognize maybe deeper layers of what is under the surface of anger, rather than the superficial layers, which just lends to that fireball energy of, you know, just react versus respond. Um, finding practical ways of how it might have served you in the past and seeing how it might be different now. And seeing new pathways, new stories, a new way of thinking about things, right? So this can be an opportunity to really heal through some deep-seated stuff that has caused a lot of anger in your life. So this full moon energy is got some really powerful energy moving through it. Now, because Pluto, if you look at Pluto up here again, it's at that 29 degrees of Capricorn. Venus is at 29 degrees Scorpio. So that can also highlight this Venus energy as well because they're carrying the same degrees, right? When we have signs that are in the same degrees, a lot of times it amplifies the energy. We've got the moon at 24 degrees Aries and we've got the sun degrees Libra, right? Because they're complete opposite. That's what makes the moon full. So anytime that there's the same degrees, it kind of helps to add a little bit more energy into what that planetary combination is doing. So air or Venus in Scorpio is, you know, kind of um, hidden secrets is what it makes me think of hidden secrets when it comes to other people and relationships. So this might be stirring up past betrayals, um, inner woundings from previous relationships or current relationships and things of that nature. So just being mindful that that could be a way that that is showing up for you. Um, and anger doesn't have to be a big thing either. It could just be something that maybe, maybe you've done a lot of work around it and the anger for you now just feels more like, um, a little bit of frustration, right? So there's a lot of different, uh, emotions that come along with anger. I feel like anger is such a broad term that covers so many other things that we could possibly be feeling that translates to anger. So recognizing those types of energies that are happening for you as we approach this full moon, right? I think it's a uh, Thursday. Is that the 17th? I think. Um, so that energy you know, we've got a couple days of feeling into this energy before we get there. So noticing, you know, what, what maybe is triggering you? What maybe are you seeing out there that like get standing on end and like starts that irritation process? And what is that process like for you? Can you slow it down and be a little bit more mindful of that process of anger rising up in you? And remembering that Pluto is that it's like pulling the death card, right? It's that ending cycle. It's a time for rebirth. It's time for transitions. It's time for change. So with this energy, we are changing the way that we are moving through our anger, the way we're expressing it, the way we're experiencing it.
Now with full moon energy, you know, like to me, the full moon is all about the embodiment practices. How do we embody the energy that is coming through at this time? So when we think about warrior energy, because it's really the archetype energy of Aries, there's so many different, you know, goddesses that I can think of that embody that warrior energy. And I was thinking about that, but none of them really, really like was like, yes, for this, the one that really stood out to me that I was like, that makes sense is Lilith. When we think about Lilith and the journey of Lilith and the mythology of Lilith, we think about someone that, you know, stood up for herself, refused to back down, dealt with the consequences as it was served to her. And she still remained standing in her power right? She used it for fuel for her own fire to live her way. And in the greater good of that, be of service in the realm of shadow work, right? She embodies what it is we have to work on inside of us. And funny enough, we've got Lilith right over here in Libra. So she is bringing that temperance into this, that recognition, that Yes, you got to sometimes, you know, not always go along with the flow of things and shake it up, stir it up and, and look at things from a different perspective and stand up for that perspective. And that is okay too. So I thought that that energy really embodies the archetype of this full moon and Aries coming up. And it just felt right to me. Um, David, I don't do a lot of work with gods. So <laughs> I work primarily with the feminine energy. So you can translate that how you need to. <laughs> oh, I, I don't need to. I think it's beautifully done as is. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> um. That Lilith energy to me has been one of my favorite to work with, especially when we're doing those deep dive, you know, shadow work type of aspects where it really does feel like a piece of us is like dying and falling away and we are rebirthing into a new version of self. And while this period for me doesn't feel like a, a really dark, heavy one for myself personally, depending on your chart and where this stuff is actually highlighting in your own personal chart, there might be some people that are feeling that. So it depends, of course, on what is what is activated in your own personal chart with this. But for me, it just feels like the ending of a cycle. That also fits with the numerology for the month of October. We are in a nine month, which is the end of a cycle. So this month is about endings. What are we ending? What are we, what are we saying goodbye to? What are we closing up or how are we finding closure with things this month so that we can be ready for the next, right? And that to me is the beauty of, of working with these energies is recognizing how we do that. Well, my brain decided to forget how to stop sharing. Where do, where's the stop share? Where's the stop share? Where did they move it to? I don't know. I don't see it. <laughs> ah. Why do they always change things? Why do they always change things? It tells me to share and I am already sharing. Can you tell me how to not share? Does anyone know? Because <laughs> it's not showing me the stop share button. Oh. All right. I'm going to figure this out, maybe. Hmm. This is what I'm talking about, guys. <laughs> this stuff drives me nuts. All right, let's see if I can change this. Where is the stop share button? I just don't get it. This is so weird. Okay. Mm. 
Jen, I know that there's a stop share button uh, in the meeting controls menu, but you can also use a keyboard shortcut, Alt S, Alt capital S, I think that you can do. That uh, highlights start focus mode. Does that do anything? No. No. Sorry, that was all I was able to find. Oh, did that do it? No. I don't know what that did. <laughs> no, not quite. It's still sharing your screen. Oh no, what is happening right now? Literally does not see. Is there a share button you said? Will it let you click on that again? Maybe that'll stop it. That's yes. What I'm yep. trying to do and it's not, I click the share button and it just takes me back to open the screen to share. My oh, it does. Okay. It's a, uh, it should be, it says that it's in the, it's in the con the meetings control menu, and there is a stop share button. Now, sorry, mm -hmm. I don't have a lot of experience with this app, so I, I can't tell you myself, but I'm reading the instructions and it says that a stop yeah. share button should appear. It usually has a stop share button. But... Focus mode is ending, okay. It's not, uh, it's not doing that. <laughs> Thank you for being on this journey with me. I'm not going to let it anger me. I'm learning. <laughs> You're doing great. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So we're just going to leave that up. It's fine. Um, yeah. And you guys can see like the chart, right? You guys are seeing the chart? Okay. Yeah. Yes, we can. All right. Okay. Well, I don't I don't know how to make it go away, so we're just gonna finish with the chart. <laughs> Love it. Okay. I'm not gonna get angry. It is what it is. It's meant to be there. <sighs> okay. I love all of the quartz that's in this computer right now and helping it to function. <laughs> Prime example of what we are working with, <laughs> this energy, the weirdest little things that, you know, can flip you upside down and be like, why is this not going the way I want, right? Um, so yeah, gotta love that Aries energy. <laughs> so thinking of the embodiment practices for Aries, how we can be more aligned to that energy and in, in the positive aspects of that energy, standing up for the things that, you know, we believe in trying to find more justice in the world, allowing ourselves to be a voice, but recognizing the tone that that voice needs to be for the world as well. Right. So not just in a way that serves your own emotional needs, but being able to also check those emotional needs. And are you trying to service your own emotional needs through what you are doing? Or are you actually being of service through what you are doing? So there's a big difference in that too. And I think that a lot of times that gets all muddied up in this world. Um, so being able to, to come back to that space of checking yourself, which is something that Aries can sometimes struggle with, right? Because we also hold that energy of, well, I feel what I'm feeling and what I'm feeling is valid, right? And that is absolutely hundred percent true. We can be valid in our emotional feelings, but then it also comes the wisdom of recognizing what are emotions? What are they? Where do they come from? And are you your emotional self or is there a higher you that's not muddied up in that emotional self? And which one of you is controlling the picture right now, right? So our emotional selves, right? That emotion that we get in our body, that's part of our nervous system interpretation of things. The heart-mind connection, the gut-heart-mind connection, right? So our, 
our our brain has neurons, our heart has neurons, our gut has neurons, and these neurons speak to each other. Our body is constantly activated in its sensory awareness, constantly taking information in around your surroundings feeding information into the body in ways that you don't even recognize, interpreting those signals to help your nervous system recognize what's going on around you. It does not take any conscious thought in your mind for that to be occurring. It is your nervous system reacting and responding to the interpreted messages coming through that sensory aspect of your nervous system. So when we think of people that maybe experience some anxiety, some fight or flight because they have social anxiety and they're in a space where there's a lot of people, right? They lose that sense of safety because it's too peopley and it's too small of a space for all the people and they're feeling all the things, right? Even if you were blindfolded and not aware and it was dead silence, your body could pick up on the energy around you and be sending that sensory information to your body, still creating that heightened response in your nervous system, right? This is part of everyone's nervous system. This is not some magic thing that only some people are sensitive to. It's a process that goes on in the body, whether you recognize it or not, right? So if we can be aware that we have this perception that is constantly happening in the body, the sensations, these, these things are being taken in and sent in through the nervous system. And it's part of that gut heart mind connection that is creating a response in the body that is literally sending the signals to tell you if you need to be anxious or not, if you need to be stressed out or not, if you need to flee the area, cause it's not safe, right? When you get the creepy feeling at night, walking through a parking lot, that's that sensation rising up in the body that's alerting your nervous system to tell you, you need to be on alert. So when we think of this, when it comes to things that might be triggering to anger, right? It's a sensation feeling that you might be getting as a response to something happening around you in the world that maybe you don't like, you think is not fair or isn't right or being handled right, right? And we're taking that in and it generates this feeling inside. Now, when these systems begin to communicate with each other, when it comes to the heart expression, this is where we begin to feel into the emotional aspect of what that emotion tends to sink in. That emotion comes from experience of other things that relate to the sensation that your body is reading. So it pulls from experience, from past experience, things that you've already went through where your internal body completely in your subconscious self is saying, oh, I remember this feeling sensation from before when this happened and this was the emotion. So I think this emotion is valid right now. Poof, here's your emotion, right? So if we are blind to this internal process going on and we're just allowing ourselves to be at the whim of our emotion, we are letting our nervous system kind of control the whole show. And our nervous system is constantly fleeting and changing all the time. Our nervous system can have us feeling happy one moment and crying the next, right? Nervous system and our emotions arise from these communications happening within our body. That's not, that's not the us behind this human body, right? That's not the soul self. That's not the higher self. That's not the most divine connected part of you. Is your emotional response valid for you in the situation that you're feeling and going through? Absolutely. But is it the higher you? Is it the soul you? Is it the you behind all of that that can begin to look at what is happening and see a larger picture of what is happening? Is it the you that can step back and look at and say, I am here living this experience to have this experience, to have this feeling, to witness this feeling, to let this feeling teach me what it is I need to know more of, right? And when we can step into that place of being the witness, we're no longer allowing the emotional self 
to be in control. We're allowing the higher self to be in control from the place of the witness and the observer. That is the practice that our dear little Aries energy needs to learn because it's very easy to allow your emotions to take control. And I feel what I feel and I'm allowed to feel it, right? And sometimes we have to express that anger and that is totally okay. Sometimes we have to allow our voice to have space because we allowed our voice to be taken away. And that is still absolutely 100% okay. But then the lesson and the learning comes in where we recognize that we're actually not that emotional part of ourselves, even though it feels so charged, so fiery, so like, ah, you know, and when we're like that, we can take up this huge space because we have this huge charge, but that doesn't mean that that is the totality of who you are because you are more than that too, right? And how can you make space for that part of you in that? Where can you find the balance in that? And so that to me is really like the deeper message of all of this energy is recognizing on another level, the you that is the human you and the you that is the higher self soul you. And which you are you serving in this moment? And it doesn't have to be about judgment, right? We're not criticizing ourselves. We're not condemning ourselves. We're not shaming ourselves. Lord knows we get enough of that in our life. <laughs> we don't have to do it to ourselves. But just allowing for that compare and contrast in your own brain. Because our brain loves to compare and contrast. And every time we allow the spaciousness for that to happen without judgment, we're allowing ourselves to grow into our witness self, into our higher self, into our soul self, because we're able to look at and say, oh, I see this and I see why this came to be. And I see, you know, where, where I was getting this from and why that, that was such a real feeling for me. But now I also see from this perspective over here, all of the other little actions inside of me that created this response. And I also know that that response that I just had was not the whole me. It was a piece of me. And I can own that fractal piece of myself. And it's okay. And this is a deeper level of self-compassion, forgiveness, and holding the space for yourself because we need to do that we have got to learn to hold space for ourselves in our healing in our life journey and all of the things and the more that you get comfortable holding space for yourself the easier it becomes to hold space for other people because you recognize that they are human going through their own journey having their own reactions and responses some of them loving to live in that ignorance is bliss lifestyle that have no desire to do any inner work to look at what might be going on inside of them to create those responses. And they just love living in a reactive state. And that is totally okay for them because that is the life they are here to live. And you just say, oh, that must be really hard. And instead of getting angry with them, instead of matching them, instead of creating a larger argument or an explosive situation, you're able to recognize the humanness because you've been able to hold space for yourself and recognize your own humanness. So Aries has a, a little bit more of a struggle with that because Aries tends to be more of the eye view, right? They are the first sign of the Zodiac. They are, you know, that new be newbies, the new beginnings coming out into the world. And they're all about, you know, how can I, how can I be of service to myself? How can I help myself? The world is all happening around me and to me, right? And so they're having to learn how to recognize where they allow themselves to step into that position versus stepping into oh, I am part of this and this is my part. 
So our little soul alignment uh, meditation for today. So let yourself get comfortable. I'm just gonna grab something over here. I remembered I had this book and I really love this book because it was such great little poems for the different signs. So we're going to do our little meditation and then I'm going to include the reading from this book in the meditation. So this book is called I Am Her Tribe. And I used to read this a lot in my yoga classes. You probably can't see it because this lighting is not the best. And it's white and it's just embossed in white. <laughs> it says, I am her tribe. <laughs> um, but it has a beautiful um, like poems for each of the zodiac signs in here too. And I absolutely love it. So I will include this um, in our meditation today. So allowing yourself to get comfortable, finding a spot that... Um, suits you for this meditation. If you want to turn your camera off and lay down, or if you like to stay se seated, it's totally up to you. But taking a moment just to allow yourself to settle in, to wiggle around, to get out any last little movements your body needs so you can settle. And taking a couple of deep breaths, allowing yourself to settle into your body a little more. With each breath, allowing yourself to be guided inward. Giving space for yourself to just be present with you in this moment. And allowing your awareness now to rest in your heart space, that space at the center of your chest. Bringing all of your awareness here to the heart space. And with your intention, just intending to connect to your central column of light, to that Shishuma channel, to that space of light within you that resides just in front of your spinal column. And see this column of light extending the length of your spinal column from the tailbone all the way up through the neck and extending up to the top of the head. As you do this, you might begin to feel a shift in your physical body as you allow yourself to be in the awareness of your energy self. Just allow yourself to get comfortable with that for a moment, breathing in and out of this energetic space within you. And with your intention now, sending that light energy down past the tailbone, down into the earth beneath you, connecting into that earth star chakra, that glowing orb of light within the earth beneath you. This orb of energy helps to naturally filter and process and transmute your energetic field. It helps to anchor you and ground you here to this space, to this time, to this place on the planet. It also connects you to those deeply nurturing energies of Mother Earth herself, of Gaia, Pachamama, Tonatzin, by all the many names she is known by. Sending that nurturing, nourishing energy back up through your energy channel. Her energy is very comforting and nurturing, like that of the Great Mother, holding and supporting and lending whatever energy you need for that nourishment for each center. And as you feel that light energy coming back up from Mother Earth, you feel it travel the entire length of that central column of light all the way up past the root and the sacral, the solar plexus, all the way up into the heart, to the throat, to the third eye, all the way up to the crown of your head, 
allowing you to feel that energy of deep comfort, allowing you to surrender a little bit more, letting go of anything that no longer serves you, letting go of any energy that is not your own, and allowing you to just be present with you. And as you get comfortable with that nurturing, grounding energy, begin to extend that column of light from the crown of your head up to your soul star chakra, that glowing white light energy above you. This soul star chakra is like your higher self chakra, this energy that is most closely connected to that divine light. You see this as a loom amplifies and to help you cleanse your energy centers that helps you to step into this higher frequency of energy that is more closely aligned to your soul self and as we tune into this energy center we see this luminous white light energy pouring down into the crown amplifying and purifying the energy of your crown chakra and we see it continuing down into the third eye filling the headspace with this luminous white light energy purifying and amplifying the energy here of your third eye space down into the throat purifying and amplifying the throat chakra the heart, purifying and amplifying the heart energy. <sighs> Into the solar plexus, purifying and amplifying that solar plexus energy. The sacral, purifying and amplifying the sacral chakra. And the root chakra, purifying and amplifying the root chakra energy. As you allow yourself to visualize this luminous white light energy filling up the entire body. Allowing that luminous white light energy to now travel down that cord of light that goes down into the earth to the earth star chakra. Anchoring your higher self here to the earth to this earth star chakra, to this life that you are currently in, in this timeline. <sighs> Connecting your highest self with your human self and feeling both of these energies now coming together, completing that polarity energy within the body as they both now flow up, back up into the body all the way up to that soul star chakra, a full complete cycle of energy that you are channeling. Allowing you to open to the wisdom of the energy that is present for you here. This Aries energy of the full moon that is coming through this lunar cycle the energy that she is here to share with her wisdom. For our sweet Aries energy, I am her, ruled by the planet of passion. Her story is one of action direction and movement. She does not wait on the voice of permission to be smart, strong, or beautiful. She knows that only she gets to write the rules on what it means to be a force in this world. A flash of light, a one-way street, a bow and arrow. She is the stereo turned up. She is a new mountain to climb, pushing herself and others outside of comfort zones. 
with bravery coursing through her veins, power pulsing at the curves of her hips. She takes bold leaps and believes she will succeed in them. Head and heart, she is a wildfire, a train at full speed. She is not scared to work for her growth, so she welcomes the unknown. Knowing it's here where anything is possible, she crafts her best life, the one of her dreams. taking in the wildness, the fierceness that is that beautiful fairy's energy. <sighs> the boldness, the courage, the activism, the leadership through courage and bravery. What does that feel like for you? Where do you feel that at in your energy? Where do you need more courage and boldness? Where do you need more temperance? Where is it that you can find growth through these energies? Allowing yourself to just take a few moments of feeling into whatever it is you need to recognize in this energy. Perhaps it's examining how you're showing up, things you might want to shift or change. Perhaps reflecting on that Mars and Pluto energy and what cycles need to end with that. Allowing yourself to bring your awareness back to that central column of light, recognizing the cords extending from the crown up to the soul star and from the root down to the earth star. 
knowing that these energetic connections are always there, you're always connected to these energies, but with your intention now, drawing down that cord from the soul star back down into the heart space and allowing yourself now to ground a little bit more back into this present space as you bring your awareness down to that cord extending down to the earth star and taking a moment to pause here and feeling into that earth star connection knowing that your earth star chakra is connected in a web of light to all the other earth stars in the planet creating this collective field within the earth part of the communication of the plants and the animals and the trees the land Now bringing that cord of energy back up to the heart chakra and allowing you to begin to bring your intention, your focus, and your awareness here to your heart space, knowing you're always connected to these energies and that your heart is the bridge to that above and below. And it is through our heart we find that healing, love, and compassion. We find our connection to that divine love energy that is infinite in supply. And we allow ourselves to come back to this space a little bit more, perhaps placing your hands on your heart energy. As you follow your breath again, allowing for a couple of deep breaths to begin to presence you back here into your body and allowing your eyes to open when you are ready. And after I read the Aries poem, I found the stop share button. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to try so hard not to crack up laughing. <laughs> it was literally on the screen, <laughs> but I didn't see it because it was blending into like my little Mac bubble of all the little apps down there. So I didn't even realize it was there. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> They got jokes all the time, <laughs> but it was, uh, yeah, perfect. <laughs> perfect. Yep. Once you stop trying so hard, boom, it appears. <laughs> so. Um, I pulled this beautiful card, which was why I ended the way I did with the earth connection. So it says, dream a beautiful dream. And it's got like that flower of life energy all through the earth. And that's often how I see it when I see that web of connection in the earth. I see it as like that flower of life on the surface with all of the many, many circles. And then it slowly shrinks down until it gets to that center core of the earth right and what i find fascinating when you get into sacred geometry is is you know you have the circle and then you have the two circles and then you have the you know more right and it continues to bubble out and that's literally how it presents itself to me when i connect into that but working with that cord of energy throughout the earth to me is a great way to find your sense of connection and belonging. So I know something that's been coming up a lot in what I've been feeling the need to share is how to, to connect into that sense of belonging because so many times people feel like isolated in what they're feeling. And 
sometimes what they're feeling actually creates that, you know, feeling of isolation, like they're just all alone in what they're going through. And to me, connecting into the the earth and connecting into that channel of energy within the earth just provides that sense of belonging. Like you're right where you need to be. Like you're connected to all of these things that you can see right here around you on the earth. And it just brings a sense of comfort. So I know a lot of times people like to go up here for things, but there is so much power in plugging into the earth and really allowing for that connection to grow and deepen. As an energetic practitioner myself, I learned once I really started diving deeper with connecting into that earth and feeling into that expansiveness of energy, immediately it was like all of a sudden I could channel so much more energy. It was like the spaciousness of myself began to grow and it shifted my energy practice. It shifted dare I say the power of the work that I offer because I'm able to channel and, and hold that space in a much larger space. So I share with you that connection, um, of really plugging into the earth of really seeing and sensing and allowing for your relationship to develop with that earth star chakra. And beyond that feeling into that connection, the roots of the trees, creating their own network in the earth, feel into that. Can you plug into that? Can you connect to the energy of the trees? Can you connect to the energy of the plants? Can you sit outside and really try to connect to a tree in your yard even or at your favorite park and just allow yourself to begin to feel and recognize what that feels like because there's such power in working with that energy that will help you in that not just sense of belonging but it helps with that energy of surrender and that is also a huge one that many people work through that lesson of having to learn how to surrender um that surrendering that turning over that giving over that releasing and letting it all go is such a powerful practice of really allowing yourself to come into yourself of stepping out of all of the things that are burdening you and allowing you to see with more clarity more compassion more ease more grace more sensitivity in a way that allows for the growth to occur so you're not stuck in that cycle so um i I don't know why that is coming through. That is not anything that I wrote down to share. So that is an important message here today for you. (laughs) So um, grounding feels extremely important right now and connecting into that network. And um, yeah, so do that work. See what that does for you. Well, thank you guys for joining me today and for um, laughing with me. (laughs) and witnessing what I go through (laughs) um I absolutely love it though and um I love that I have a witness to this (laughs) it's like when you're trying to find eyeglasses and you realize you have contacts in yeah yeah (laughs) I just did (laughs) the meditation I was laughing at you and I was looking for my glasses and I was like Oh, contacts are in. Yeah. <laughs> Karma. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> it, it's fun. It keeps us grounded. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Everything, everything can teach you. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Sometimes they got jokes in the way they tend to do that. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate you taking the time out on this Monday. I know I threw some people off with doing this on a Monday instead of a Sunday, but I was working all day Sunday. So thank you for joining me today. Those of you that could, and for those that watch the replay, thank you so much for taking the time to tune in. I hope this helps to be of service to you. It's a beautiful session. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Bye.